faces. Normally clean shaven guys have some scuffy overnight growth, some beards they've got to deal with. Am I right about it? Some of us look real scary in the morning. And I guarantee you, none of you here today look right now like you looked when you first got up this morning. Facing our mirrors first thing in the morning is not that pleasant of an experience. Mirrors are very honest little things. They don't compromise. They don't gloss over our defects. The blemish that the foundation is covering on your face right now, the mirror showed it to you this morning. Amen. They don't tell us that we're better looking than we actually are. They show us every wart, every wrinkle, every gray hair, every zit, the hairs that are hanging out of our nose. The better the mirror, the more the flaws that we see. That's why we got mirrors in the bathroom in the first place. Because as unpleasant as it may be to confront our own faces the first thing in the morning, if we don't take a look at ourselves and make some major adjustments, the rest of the world is going to see that morning face. <laughs> so you have to understand that the text in James says he's like a man who has beholden his natural face in a glass. That word natural in the Hebrew is transliterated to mean your birth face. And so he sees his birth face in the glass. Not the face with the makeup on it. Not the face after you use the curling irons. Not the face after the eye shadow. Come on, y'all. Not the face after you use the sea breeze and the noxema and the proactive so you can, you know, so you can uh, preserve your sexy. But your birth face, that's what you see in the mirror. So it's better to face the truth in the morning so we can make the changes we think are necessary to make ourselves presentable before the rest of the world. Amen. Amen. As they're saying, mirror, mirror on the wall. Anybody know where that comes from? Yeah, Snow White. Remember the Wicked Witch in the story? Loved it when the mirror told her that she was the fairest of them all. But when it told her that she wasn't, she got very angry and very jealous. And that's the thing about good mirrors. They always tell the truth, even if we don't like what we see. Mirrors let us know the real self or the real person that we are. And the thing, brothers and sisters, about starting with the man in the mirror is that once we see what's wrong, we must understand that a change needs to be made. When we look in a mirror, it reflects back a true image of what and who we are. Every morning as we prepare for work or whatever we're going to do that day, we generally don't leave without looking in the mirror. If you're like some of my kids, if you're like Erica, you look there five or six or seven or eight times. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The mirror enables us to see if there's anything out of place. It gives us a chance to correct the problem. Amen. So in our text in James, it tells us, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like the man beholding his natural face in the glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. In other words, uh, you see your true reflection, but forget what and who you are. So what happens is the word of God is like a mirror. It shows you you for who you are. The word of God reflects back on you where you fall short. It tells us where our faults are. 
And just like sometimes we look in the mirror and get upset with what we see when the preacher or the teacher or whoever sometimes teaches the word of God, we get mad with the one holding up the mirror. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. I'm just holding up the mirror. What you see in it is you. Don't get upset with senior pastor because of what you look like when reflected against the backdrop of the mirror of the word of God. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Yeah. In our text, in Psalms, Brother David knew that he had a problem. He knew he needed to get fixed up. He knew that it took God to make the changes necessary for him to be what he once was. David had seen the error of his ways and had lost the joy that he once enjoyed being in the presence of God. He had taken a close look at the man in the mirror. And at this point in his life, David realized that something needed to change. Brothers and sisters, all of us have to come to a point in our lives that we realize we just can't go on the way we've been going on. As we look at our text this morning, we see in verse 1, David appeals at once to the mercy of God. Even before he mentions his sins, he appeals to God's mercy. That's what we need to do. God is a merciful God. And God is willing to forgive us. And we need to learn how to ask God for mercy. Before we even state what we have done, we need to ask for his mercy and forgiveness. Every time I pray, the first thing I ask God is to please forgive me of my sins and transgressions. Before I ask him for a blessing, before I ask him for healing, before I ask him for money, before I intercede on behalf of anybody else, I beg of God to have some of his mercy. Then David asked God to wash him. Brothers and sisters, a lot of us need... A good washing. Not just a quick shower. Not young people, the bird bath. When you run some water in the sink, get the face towel and, amen. But we need a complete and thorough scrubbing. In order for us to change, we need to be washed thoroughly. David realized it was not enough to just blot out his sins, but he needed to be washed through and through. David acknowledged his transgression, and too many times we try to hide our bad traits. We, we won't reveal them to any family members or friends or even to ourselves, even though the Bible says for us to confess our faults one to another. In order for us to be cleansed, we must admit that we have a problem that we need to be cleansed from. We must admit not only to others, but at least to ourselves. Amen. It's a shame when we fool ourselves. Even though half the time, I want you to know others already know what the problem is. We sometimes refuse to see it ourselves. It's just like a drug addict or alcoholic. Before they can be helped, they must admit that they have a problem. David continues on, and by the time he reaches the 10th verse, David asks the Lord to create in him a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within him. This is the change David is looking for. David is asking for a new and a better him. David wants to be new and improved. At this point, he wants to be more like Jesus. I wonder if there's anybody in here who wants to be more like Jesus. I tell you that our aim should be what David's aim was, to be more like the Lord. We should all want to be just like him. We should want